have done that, Father. We give you the glory. We declare you as our King, our victorious King. We thank you for the victory through you. Through you, we thank you for victory. We thank you and glorify you. Hallelujah. We thank you. You are our risen King. You are our risen King. Hallelujah. No one but you could have done it for us. And we worship you.
give you all the glory, the grace of King. We give you all the glory, the grace of King. Amen. 
that we can appropriate here in our lives. Amen? That church was a church in Philippi. The church in Philippi. So if you would turn with me to the New Testament letter of Philippians, please. Philippians chapter number 2. Philippians chapter number 2 and verse 1. Sing me on there. Amen. 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 I see some of us that are using the old school uh, paper and leather method are beating some of you for are still scrolling. Amen. Come on. Come on. You're still tapping and scrolling. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word of God says this. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united to Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing or fellowship in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete, Paul says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each one of you to the interests, interests of the others. Verse 5, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset or the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. A climate change. Father, thank you so much for this wonderful plan that you have ordained from the beginning of time called the church. Lord, where you draw together imperfect people with our weaknesses, God, with our sinful propensities, and by your grace and the working of your spirit, you meld us together, Lord, as one body to reflect the beauty of who you are. And I just pray, Lord God, that whatever our individual climate is in our minds right now, whatever's going on there, whatever's going on in our thoughts and our emotions, God, and whatever has been in the past, even in this body, we ask that you would set the temperature, God. Yes, Lord. That you would set the climate, Lord, in our minds, our hearts, God, and in this church body. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Now, Paul is talking to the church in Philippi, which you can go back and you just want to do a little bit of background. You can look at Acts chapter 16, uh, verse, verses 11 and following. It gives the account of Paul coming to Philippi and the, uh, the destruction and leadership of the Holy Spirit and gathering a community of Jesus followers there and how uh, that church began to grow up in this Roman colony full of uh, Roman soldiers and former Roman soldiers that were very proud of their heritage, their patriotic, they were very patriotic for the city and the, and the, the uh, empire of Rome. They were very patriotic. And so because of that patriotism, patriotism um, it brought a little problem for the church there in Philippi when they started to talk about there was being another king and his name was Jesus. It brought a little conflict with those that were the, the inhabitants of Philippi when they talk about Jesus as king. And and it, it caused them to come into conflict with them. And they started to talk about the fact that they were citizens of another city or another country, another kingdom. They began to uh, cause conflict with this church. And so because of that, there was opposition, there was hostility, and there was persecution. And because of that, these believers, they were suffering. Come on, they were being opposed and being pushed out as outcasts in the, in the margins of the culture. But Paul comes along and he says, not only are you guys allowing the opposition on the outside to infiltrate you, but there has been some problems you guys are having on the inside. Somebody say on the inside. Oh, yeah. Because if you read chapter 4, there's, a, uh, there's an indication that there was some conflict and there was some animosity and rivalry that was taking place, not just among people in the church, but leaders in the church. And Paul has to come in and says, you guys need to change the way you respond. You've got to change the culture that you're allowing. Instead of allowing that opposition to, to uh, cause you to shrink back in terror, he said, you guys are, can experience joy in the midst of the opposition that you're facing. And instead of allowing this conflict and this division to continue, there could be and should be unity among you. And so he's very much concerned about their unity and their joy. And so in these 
this passage in these first five verses of chapter two, there's a couple things I see that he gives them and he gives to us that will help promote that new climate, that change that is going to be experienced joy even in the face of opposition and unity even when there even when there are differences. The first one is this: he tells them to consider your position. Consider your position. Where do you see that, Pastor? Look with me back at verse one. He says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if there's any comfort from his love, if there's any fellowship or common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. Remember, Paul's goal here is for them to have joy in opposition and to have unity in the face of division. In division. And the way he does that, look at this, is that he focuses their attention on four graces that are the result of the fact that they are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Notice that. You know, he, gives, he gives us those right here in these verses. He says, if you have any encouragement, if you have any comfort of his love, if there is any fellowship or common sharing in the spirit, and if, if there is any tender, tenderness or compassion, then make my joy complete. What is he saying? He is not saying that there is any question or any doubt as to whether or not we should have uh, encouragement or whether or not we have any comfort in his love or any uh, fellowship with the spirit or tenderness and compassion. He's really saying because you have these things. Come on, follow me. He's using, he's using kind of a, a linguistic or a oratorical device and say, think about it for a minute. Since you have encouragement by being united with Christ, since you have comfort from having his love or, or God the Father's love, if you have fellowship with the Spirit, because you do, and if there's inter since there is tenderness and compassion that should be among you, make my joy complete. I just want to say about that, that whenever we are looking for something to get around our experience and our emotions and the climate of our life upon, sometimes we go to everything else but what we should be going to. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just ask you for a moment. What would encourage you today? What would encourage you today? Come on, somebody says, take me out to lunch. Huh? Pay, 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 pay my bills, some people say. Yeah, we're getting there, amen. <laughs> we, we, we say, so that would encourage me, amen. Wow. There's a whole lot of it. Somebody fixes some little problems that I have in my house. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Those people would, would encourage you. Who would comfort you? Wow. Huh? Wow. Come on. There's a lot of things that we point to, but look at what Paul point, point, <laughs> points to for encouragement and for comfort, for a sense of belonging. What does he point to? He points to spiritual realities that are found in Christ that are not affected by what's going on outside of him. Look at that. He said, since you have encouragement from being united with Christ, he draws their attention to that central doctrinal truth that when we put our faith in Christ, we are brought in union with him. We are intertwined with him. We are in Christ. That is one of the most dominant phrases in all the New Testament of Paul's writings is he's repeatedly calling believers to ethical behavior based upon the fact that they are in Christ. Amen. They are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Other places he says live in Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, where are you living this morning? Come on, where are you living? Yeah. Come on, you're living in the fog of, of the boss's reprimand from last Wednesday. Wow. And you're living in that. You're living in the fog of the misunderstanding of your family member. You're living in that. Paul said, no, you can find encouragement by reminding yourself yeah. that your address is in Christ. Yeah. That's where I live. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean that what happens outside of me doesn't affect me, but where I live is based upon the of somebody that God knows better that I am in Christ and he is in me. Paul says, find encouragement in that. Yes. Because this world that we live in, come on. This world that we live in. And some of the people that you know, go straight ahead. Only the person next to you. Come on. They will, they will cause you to feel inadequate. Yes, yes. They may invalidate who you are. They may embitter you. Yes. Come on, somebody. Or inhibit what you believe that God is wanting you to do. Yes, yes. Come on. The world and the people sometimes we come in contact with, yes. we let those things in. And Paul says, if you put your feet firmly on the bedrock of the fact 
He said, you have a sharing with the Holy Spirit. You have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, he says to these believers, he says, we were all baptized. He's talking about all believers. We were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body. He's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about when you come to Christ, you are literally spiritually united in the body of Christ with every other believer. There is a spiritual connection that takes place. And he joins you together. He baptizes you into that living body. And he says, whether you're Jews or Gentiles, whether you're slave or free, come on, if you work in the, in the 30th floor of the Trans-America building or you are unemployed, you are connected to that same body. Come on, somebody. You're connected to that same body. He said, we were all given, here it is, the one spirit to drink. He said, I don't care what your spiritual status is. Your social status or your financial status. If you come to Christ, we are all indwelled and drawing from that same spiritual life, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Yeah. Make that real to us, Jesus. We are drawing from that same Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Your problems are not my problems, but we're drawing from the same Holy Spirit. Your hardships are not my hardships, but we're both drawing from that same Holy Spirit. Beyond just us drawing from that same Holy Spirit and the fellowship and the communion that we have with the Holy Spirit, He now is also saying, You have fellowship with that Spirit in commonality with one another. Amen. So, not, all, not only are you in fellowship with God the Father and God the Son by His Spirit, you are in fellowship with each other, yes. with one another. Oh, come on, Spirit. Come on. You're not just sitting on the pew next to somebody who showed up in the same physical space you did on the same time. Mm -hmm. If you have been born again, you are connected to one another yeah. by the Holy Spirit. There's a fellowship. Paul Peter calls it a life precious faith okay. that bears witness to each other. That's, right. That's a brother right there. That's, right. That's a sister right there. Amen. They've got issues. They've got problems. I've got issues. I've got problems. But I sense the same Holy Spirit working in them and drawing them and living through them. There's a bond that happens there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There's a unity that that produces when we let that be our focus and we consider that. Amen. Come on, somebody. That, that political affiliation cannot, cannot touch that. Amen. Nothing else can touch that level of connection yeah. that the Holy Spirit brings to us. Yeah. Consider that position. Yeah. He says, if there's any encouragement from being united to Christ, if there is any comfort from being in his love, if there's any fellowship or common sharing in the spirit, that, that, that threefold working of the Holy Spirit we see here. Thank you, Lord. And then he gives one more grace that is ours. He says also, if there's any tenderness and compassion. And he doesn't make any reference to Trinity or a deity there. He's talking about tenderness and compassion among us as brothers and sisters in the family. One another. Mm. Tenderness and compassion. <laughs> Living in relationships where tenderness and compassion is practice. Love. Love. He, Paul assumes that. He assumes that that's the norm for brothers and sisters. That's what he's about to base the call of unity upon, are those spiritual realities, those graces that are the inheritance and the possession of every believer in Jesus. Yes. I love how Peter, the Paul here, he takes theology and he makes it practical. He causes theology to explode. And I think that we need to have a resurgence our faith upon the theological realities of our relationship with Jesus and not just as Pentecostal on how we feel. Yeah. Come on, listen, I love to shout. Give me a good shout of service and I might surprise you. I love to sing. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, when I stop shouting and I stop singing, it's the doctrinal truth of the Word of God yes. that anchors you. Yes. That's what yes. matures you. That's what yes. grows.
provokes you. Can I just say, that's what delivers you from your hang-ups and your, and, your, and your inhibitions and your worries and your fears on, and your temptations and your weaknesses. It is being firmly grounded on the truth of God's word. And the spirit inspired to work with in order to deliver us to your life. Yes. Amen. So I think we need to train our condition, that is our emotional and our mental state, to respond to our position. Amen. Amen. Train your condition to respond to the truth of your position in Christ. That is, Lord, that I am united to Christ. I am loved by God the Father. I am dwelt in fellowship with the Spirit. Listen, and I am also in fellowship with my brothers and sisters. Amen. That was my life. Secondly, real quick. Secondly, related to that, not only do we have to consider your position, but also remind us to connect to God's people. Connect to God's people. Look at me at verse number two. Paul says, Make my joy complete. How, Paul? By being like minded, by having the same love, by being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility value others above or prioritize others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, reply only, but each of you should look to the interests, interests of the others. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, if we're going to change the climate, then we have to connect to one another. We're not just marbles bouncing around on a Sunday morning in a sanctuary. Amen. Amen. But we have to connect to one another. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. I know you don't like them, but you got to connect to them. Amen. Amen. Come on. I know they, they don't dress the way you dress. Amen. Amen. They don't like to eat the places you like to eat. Come on. But they're family. Amen. Amen. Come on. They're family. And the same Holy Spirit that lives in you lives in them. And so Amen. God says we've got to have the same mind and the same attitude. Amen. Not saying that we have to think exactly alike on all topics. Amen. He's not saying that. Amen. <laughs> Come on. We, we found that out in March of 2020. Come on, somebody. March of 2020, when they started talking about mandating masks and shutting down the church, there were there, there were some people that were saying, look, well, we're not gonna let we're not gonna let the government tell us what to do, bless God, Pastor. Open up and sing louder and, and spit on people while you're singing. <laughs> Just to prove the point, you know. There's other people that say, no, we, we, we need to follow the, the authorities and we need to demonstrate the law. And there's some people that we can't wear masks. God's not in that. But, you know, God is not one of us to do that. And other people say, well, God wants to. Listen, there are, there are differences on both sides. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And continue to be differences on both sides. And the one thing that I say that from your God is less concerned with what side you're on and the attitude you have towards the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. You've got to demonstrate charity or love, amen, towards one another, amen. Come on. The mask wearers, you've got to love the non mask wearers. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And the non mask wearers, you've got to stop accusing the mask wearers. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting in trouble here, aren't I? <laughs> Vaccinators and non-vaccinators. Come on. You're going to have all of that. And Paul says, that's the secondary issue. The real issue is that you are like-minded. You have the same attitude of humbling yourself for the benefit of another. Yeah. That is something that we as a church have the opportunity to demonstrate to a world that is bitterly at war with each other over these, these things. Right. Amen. Yeah. Have you seen some super, supermarket fights? Come on. But as a church, he's saying, you guys have the same spirit. Come on. Let your goal be to love one another. Love those that are different from you. Amen. Amen. To make the cause of Christ a higher priority. Amen. 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 We're not a cult. We tell everybody to think the same way, do the same thing. But we do have bottom line priority virtue. Yes. Love for one another that puts the needs of somebody else above my own. That's bottom line. Yeah, my book. <laughs> Come on. That's part of changing the culture of our hearts and the culture of the church. Have the same mind. Have the same attitude. Do nothing out of selfish ambition. Ooh, mm. Selfish ambition. That's what I'm saying. You can't always see self 
of tradition. Paul uses that phrase, that idea, five, five other times. One is in Romans chapter 2, those of you guys that like to study. Romans chapter 2, verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 20. Galatians chapter 5, verse 20. Here in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. And there's an interesting one in Philippians chapter 1, verse 17, where he says that there were some people that were preaching Christ. Hear me. They were preaching Christ motivated by selfish ambition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's talking about preachers. Oh, yeah. Preachers that are in it for their own reputation. Mm -hmm. Preachers that are in it for their own climbing of the enthusiasm of that. For reputation of that. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I recognize it. I think out there people are preaching Christ out of a motive of selfish ambition. And Paul says, do nothing out of selfish ambition. Whatever you have, you have. 
be stronger. You might be better looking. Amen. But you're only that because God made you that. Amen. And gave you that to be to be somebody else. Don't squander it on selfish ambition. Yeah. Let me give you one more before we're done. One more. Okay. Nothing to change the climate.
not just serving others, but to follow the example that was set for us by Christ. Amen. Well, God has put examples in your life. Amen. He's put people in your life. Amen. He's put spiritual moms, spiritual fathers, brothers and sisters in the Lord that are examples of selflessness, of ending themselves, of serving others, where they cost them, come on, of looking out after your interests and the interests of others, even at the expense of their own. Listen, there comes a point where we have to turn the table and we have to be the ones that are serving others at the expense of our own. Yes. Of our own yes. Or we have to turn from just being a consumer to being a contributor. Amen. Yeah. As a part of the spirit and part of changing your culture means we follow those things and those sorts of examples. Who is it in your life right now that you could be an example of selflessness and humility in meeting a need that would be a benefit to them even at cost to yourself? Mm -hmm. Is you that you follow me to that? You're following the footsteps of Jesus. You're following the footsteps of Jesus. If, we, if that's how we begin to think, if that's how we begin to live, amen, out of those graces that are, that are just, that are realities for us, amen, and I, I follow the example that we have here, this God is going to change the culture of our body. He's going to change the culture of our lives so that we can be that body that represents Christ in the way to the world that makes him visible. And that's what we want in the church. In the church. And I turn towards you. And I turn towards you. 
and I turn towards you. I believe you paid the price for my sin. I believe you paid the price for my sin. When you died on the cross. When you died on the cross. And so I put my confidence in you. Lord, I put my confidence in you. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my heart. Make me brand new. Make me brand new. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my sin. And from this moment forward. Live inside, of me. Live inside of me. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my master. Be my master. Be my savior. Be my savior. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.
México, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Perú, Chile. Yes, amen. Wow. Nicaragua, El Salvador, Peru, and Chile. You only miss it, brother. You only miss it. Amen. But your, your grace family, we're going to support you in prayer, brother. Okay. Amen. So we want to pray for our brother while he's gone down to the victim ministry. And uh, if you'd like to give towards that, just call the envelope. Uh, if you want to draw an offering this morning, just write Brother Camino. Amen. And we want to make sure that we give as a church to support that work for you online. And you can designate it that way as well. Amen. Thank you. 